Hello, everybody, and welcome to Anglin Insider Television. I'm your host, Captain Jack Medla, and I just want to say how excited I am to be starting our very first episode here with you guys. We're going to be your inside report to all things Treasure Coast, whether it be products, fishing, boating, everything for you guys. We're going to bring it to you, and we have all the knowledge, all the experience of all these local captains and all these local businesses here in Fort Pierce, Stewart, Sebastian, Melbourne, all things Treasure Coast. So this episode, we're going to dive into summer fishing here in the Treasure Coast. We talked about mahi-mahi, we talked about grouper fishing, we talked about snapper fishing. I was with my good friend, Captain Jason Muller with Muller Maritime Fishing Charters. So before we hop on the boat, a little bit about myself. I grew up here in Florida, and for the past seven years, I've been here in Fort Pierce, fishing the area and learning about the boating and fishing industry. Before that, I went to school down at the University of Miami, and I studied marine and atmospheric science at the Rosensteel School of Marine and Atmospheric Science there. And I focused on predator and prey relationships with tarpon, tuna, mahi-mahi, cobia, all those species that we studied there, down there at the University of Miami. Um, now that I'm back here, I'm working at Freedom Boat Club of Fort Pierce as their operations manager, and I'm just really excited to share my experiences. But enough about me, it's time to head on the water, so I'll see you out there. Captain Jack Medler here with Anglin Insider Television. I got my good friend Captain Jason Muller here with Muller Maritime Fish and Charters out of here in Fort Pierce, Florida. We're just going to be talking about summer fishing in the Treasure Coast today. So, uh, so Jason, what do you what do you like to target summertime? Uh, well, Jack, my favorite thing in the summertime is the mahi bite. Oh, yeah. Love to chase them down offshore on the grass piles. You know, kingfish mm -hmm. bite's been real good. Right well, and now. as and as a charter captain, you know, I mean, what what better is it? What better feeling is it to go out there, you know, and, and get on a big old school of mahi mahi? You see your clients catching these beautiful fish, jumping out of the water, soaring. Get a big old box full of meat to bring home for your clients. I mean, that's just the perfect fish, perfect time of year to get them. I guess, you know, in the Treasure Coast, down in Stewart, we start seeing them, you know, early, mid-May. Um, you know, they're, they're pushing up from down south. Usually they'll make their way all the way up to the Carolinas. Um, but we get a good big run of bigger fish this summertime, um, all the way up probably through July and August. You know, and, and every year there's charter captains out of the Treasure Coast pulling fish, you know, 40, 50 pounds out of Absolutely. here. And it's and it's right in our backyard in the Treasure Coast. You know, when I, when I target these dolphins, I'm, I'm basically running and gunning for them. So I'm looking for, you know, four to five different things out there. Um, you know, birds, find floating debris in birds. Um, I feel like I can have a pretty successful day out there. Um, the, the next two is any sort of current rip usually coincides with, you know, weeds. If you if you find some sort of rip or anything like that and you follow it, you usually will find some sort of floating to be free, whether it's weeds, a chair, a big tree, whatever. Um, and then also if you add like water temperature in there, water color, anything like that, anything out of the normal, um, you'll you'll run across all these pelagic species migrating. In that situation, you know, you're running out there, you find these birds, you find these you know, you find the weeds or anything, you know, you, you, you travel that weed line for a little bit. You look, does it look fishy? Am I seeing bait? Am I seeing, am I seeing gold? You know, a lot of times you run up on one of these weed lines and, and you know, you, you, you follow it for a half mile and you run across a school of dolphins. You know, I'd much rather do that running than gunning, you know, and, uh, and get on a school of dolphins and troll all day long. That first weed line I hit, it might be, you know, the biggest weed line in the world. It might be the best looking weed line in the world, but fish and I might, might not be there. If I run another two miles out deeper, you know, maybe I'm in 250 feet of water, 400 feet of water now, and hit another weed line. That might be the weed line that holds all the fish. But everybody gets stuck on that first set. They see that weed line. They think it's the best thing ever. They waste their whole day there on a weed line that's not holding bait, not holding fish. And, you know, if they ran another two miles out, they might have ran across the one. They would have, they would have filled the box exactly. And it's, you know, as as a new angler going out, um, I would say the biggest piece of advice I would give you, you know, dolphin fishing or really any time, any type of fishing is is don't get caught in a routine. Um, you know, you can go out there and you control that weed line for four hours, and catch one fish or nothing. Um, you know, after after hour one, 
you know, I would probably start thinking, hey, let's let's make a move. Let's let's change something up. Yesterday, actually, you had a you had a charter out of uh, Fort Pierce, right? Yes, sir. We did pretty we, good uh, yesterday. Yeah, we do. Uh, we started out the morning trolling, uh, got into a bonita bite, mm -hmm. and. Yeah, we were hoping for some black fin, but they ended up being bonitas, but they're still a really hard pulling fish. Yeah, and, yeah. and they're nice, nice sized fish too. When so we started trolling, trolling out, the grass was there, but it wasn't consistent, no consistent weed line, it was just scattered, so it's like, okay, time to change the game. Exactly. And uh, so we pulled everything in, had all my deep drops set up, I'm like, yeah, let's try a couple of deep drops. Mm -hmm. Went out, targeted some golden tile. It didn't take too long to get our one tile fish limit for the boat. Yep. And on the way back in, like Jack was saying, we got lucky. Found a nice big tree branch in the water. Uh, didn't really see any mahi on it, but there was some bait there. We were uh, messing around with a triple tail, and then all of a sudden, 30 fish in the water. Yep. Just out of nowhere. That's how it happens. And it's like it's like that. It's one second, you got nothing. The next second, there's fish everywhere. And it's absolute chaos, and that's and that's what it, why it pays to go out with a captain like Jason here. Because in a situation like that, he knows what to do. He knows how to get you know those fish in the box. There's a system. Oh, you, you see those fish? Okay, what do you do first? You throw bait in the water. I want to get them. I want to get them around the boat. Get so them fired up. Get them fired up. Throw, throw bait in the water. Full of chunks in the water. Yep. Whatever you got. Get them. Get them comfortable. Make sure that you know you know the, those first couple baits shouldn't have a hook in them. Because you want to make sure those fish are comfortable. And that first fish you hook up, we're leaving them in the water. You know, because um, if you, I, I'm sure you've heard it a million times. You know, you got a school of dolphin on the boat, leave one hooked up, set it in the rod holder, because that school will usually hang around that one fish. Um, you know, as, as long as you're, you're keeping up with chumming and stuff like that. So as the captain, you know, you're facilitating this whole thing. You know, we have a we have a fish in the water in the rod holder. Captain's consistently throwing out bait, and then your clients are you know throwing out just straight up single hooks with a little chunk bait. And um, and if you do if you play it right, you could you could pretty much wipe out a whole school of school of fish, or at least until you're you're done catching. Um, because you know those fish are hungry, they're vicious, um, and they'll they'll stay around as long as there's constant food. Um, they'll stick around, and, uh, and, and you should be able to have a pretty fun day. And it's a huge day saver. So you went out there. I mean, you had a plan, and it's always good to, I mean, assume that that plan's going straight out the window. So you got Plan B. You got Plan C. You got Plan D. Um, your Plan B was to go out get those tilefish, uh, deep dropping, especially this time of year with the weather so nice. It's always, always such a great idea. It's always something to have in your back pocket. It's one rod. You bring one extra rod on your boat, um, and you can go out there and fill the box if you're having trouble catching fish inshore or whatnot. Um, and then when you're out there, you know, of course, there's always that potential for that school of mahi to come up. So it's it's a huge plus. And this time of year, with that big run coming through, um, you know, there's there's a good chance that when you're out there, you'll you'll see something, or those dolphin will come come right up Absolutely. on you. Absolutely. You know, you're dropping down a big old chicken rig basically full of bait up and down up and down up and down a hundred times out there something something's gonna see it may that means uh in my eyes may means scripper right um that's my favorite thing to do i love going out there i love i love dropping big baits big reels um deep water catching big mean looking groupers um which what's, what's your favorite grouper to target whether it's a deep water group or deep drop in or you know you know, shallower water. What, what do you like to go for? What, what's your What's your top fish? <clears throat> it all depends on the day. If you yep. uh, you know, if you're fishing a 90 foot structure, you know, the red grouper are pretty easy to catch. You yep. can get them on a chicken rig. Those gags, though. You know, this time of year, I guess, I guess we're kind of targeting them. You know, in deeper water. Uh, you know, basically, I'm looking for live bottom. Um, I like I like a nice live rock. Uh, a lot of times. Um, if you find a rock out there, there's going to be more around the same area. So take your time, you know, explore that area, uh, do nice long drifts, and um, and you know, see what's holding, see what's holding on. You know, if you're grouper fishing, would you rather be anchored or drifting, or you know, you're depending on depth or, or conditions? What what do you look for that makes you want to say, okay, let's let's start drifting this spot, 
or, or let's anchor on the spot. Let's set the hook. Well, it all depends on your current, you yeah. know, wind direction. A lot of that plays a big factor exactly. in what you want yeah. to do. Uh, you're going to have a lot of scope of rope out if you're at 250. Oh, yeah. So you're yeah. going to have oh, you, 900 foot of line yeah, out. Yeah, you're, so you're, you're going to want to bring a tremendous swing whenever you get your anchor to the ground. Depending upon wind and current, could change your position substantially. Exactly. So exactly, it's, it's difficult. A very calm weather day to be able to anchor. I mm -hmm. mean, easiest thing to do for me really is to just set up a nice drift and just make a drift, get a bite, come back. If not, check another rock. It gives you an air, uh, opportunity to cover more ground. Exactly. And a exactly. lot of times with these bigger fish, you have to cover ground to find the bigger fish. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's. I found that if I'm if I'm anchored up on a spot and I lose a fish in the rock, like he rocks me up, I break him off, that spot's done. I'm not going to catch another grouper on that spot um, for that for that day, usually. Um, with drifting, though, you know, if I lose that fish, that might be on rock number one. You know, I might have six or seven rocks or ledges in that, in that drift that I'm going to hit. So I know, okay, I got six or seven more shots on this drift to hook a bigger fish. If I'm anchored up on a spot, you know, and I lose a fish, I might shut it down and then, okay, am I gonna, am I really gonna pick up 900 feet of anchor line and, and anchor back up on the, on, the, on the ledge right next to it? Or am I just gonna reset my drift? Um, so most of the time, it's, um, it pays off to just drift. You might, you might use a little bit more in gas. Um, but it's, you know, it's a little bit more active and you're covering more ground, which is huge. I mean, like you said, you know, if you're, if you're putting all your, all your money on one spot, on one ledge, that might not be the ledge of the day. You know, um, it might be, it might be the one 50 feet away from it. It might be the one 100 feet away from it that, you know, is holding all the fish that day. Um, the ocean's different every single time you go out there. And if you, like I said before, you know, if you catch yourself in a routine, you're going to start losing fish, or you're going to start missing opportunities. Um, because the second the second you start doing the same thing over and over again is the second you're going to stop getting better. It's it's when you're it's when you're going to stop improving, catching catching bigger fish, catching more fish because because uh, you know the ocean's constantly changing, so we got to be constantly changing. We got to be constantly adapting. Here's a quick little word from our sponsor. Without all them, you know nothing would be possible. So let's go uh, check that out. Family time's been fantastic. Freedom's helped us a ton because we've gone out on the boat at, at Freedom Boat Club on days we never would have otherwise done. We show up, get on a boat, and we're out on the water within minutes. It's phenomenal. They carry my bags to the boat, they carry my bags back from the boat, so I couldn't ask for anything more. Wow, that was some exciting talk about grouper. And I, I gotta say, I, I, that's my favorite, absolute favorite fish to catch, Target. They're beautiful and they are, they're mighty tasty on the dinner table. Um, so let's go ahead and check out this clip we got of us grouper fishing right out of here in Fort Pierce, Florida. Let's check it out. Oh, he's looking red, looking like a, oh, big red grouper, big red grouper, get him. I'm watching. <laughs> My bad. Big red grouper. Nice. I wasn't watching worse. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. You're, you're going to break this yeah, rod. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. Yeah. That's okay. Woo, nice red grouper on the grunt again. Dad, you're the red grouper man. Red grouper king. Get that damn hook out. I can't. Follow the circle. Just Probably follow the circle. <laughs> nice fish. Hold that I got excited. Good, Good job, John. He's fighting like a grouper. 
Keep him coming. Good work. Whatever it is, he's a floater. Ooh, nice red grouper. Nice job. Big donkey red grouper, John. Nice. Woo! Big donkey red. <laughs> what an absolutely beautiful fish right here. Big red grouper. Nice job, John. Nice. I'll stop recording. Nah, just keep going. You're good. What an absolutely beautiful yep. stud. Big donkey. Woo! All right, cool, we got dinner. Let's get him in here. Cool, let's get some more. Here's a quick little word from our sponsor. Summertime, you know, I also love going out there, uh, you know, saver fishing. You know, that's, that's really fun fishing, in my opinion. Um, I love, you know, I love doing the chumming, uh, getting them up off the bottom. Uh, you can do the same thing with those mangroves if you get them right. Um, the biggest thing there is just making sure that you're you're anchored up properly. If you're if you're fishing a ledge and you're you're 20 feet off the side of it, you know you, you're not you're not catching anything. Um, you know you want to make sure that that those baits that you're presenting these fish are are you know right in front. Of them. You know if my bait isn't right at the mouth of that ledge. I'm not catching a fish. If my bait's on the backside of that ledge, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be getting grunts and trigger fish and sea bass all day. But for the most part, all these ledges are relatively similar. You know, some of them hold more life than others. Some of them go back deeper than others, of course. Um, but for the most part, I can I can fish almost any spot on that 90 look bar and uh, and be successful because you know, I'm I'm anchoring up on it properly. And then from there, it's all about well, one getting them, getting them off the bottom. Those yeah, mangroves, they're not the pressure on yeah. them. Once they, once you knock on their front door, when they grab dinner, they're going back home. Yeah, got to exactly. keep the pressure on them. I mean, they're they're not a, it's not a gruber, but that fish, a ten pound mangrove, I promise you, will, you they will pull. pull. They beat them that first ten feet. Okay, you feel safe, but now you, now you got to worry about the sharks. <laughs> got to so, keep the pressure on all the way till the all surface. the way up. The last thing. You, you want to be thinking about is is enjoying the fight and and reeling them in nice and just just playing them out. This, if you don't bring that fish up as fast as you physically can, so, something else is going to eat it. And and uh, and one of those big sandbar sharks isn't isn't going to go after that that black sea bass you hooked up. He's going to go after that big mangrove or and that. He's going to eat the best part of it. He wants he wants to eat what you want to eat. And uh, he's he's only going to leave you a pair of lips, basically. Whatever your hook's attached with, if you get your hook back, all you're getting is a head or a pair of lips. Out of my way, I would go out there and target that 10 pounder every single time, right? But you know, sometimes you're taking kids out on the boat. Sometimes you know you got friends that that aren't as comfortable as you are, and they just want to catch some fish. Um, so you have the potential to go out there and catch that 10 pounder, but you also have the potential to stay in a little bit closer, um, fish a little bit easier, and uh, and just get a couple tacos for dinner. Uh, don't be shy on the hot sauce, Angel. Snapper fishing, Fort Pierce, Florida, we took out a couple of good friends of mine, and uh, we just decided to go out there. It was a nice, easy day, nice and calm. Um, they were very unfamiliar with fishing in general. Um, so I decided it was a nice idea just to stay in close and do some nice snapper fishing. So that's what we did. Let's go check out that clip. Oh, there he is. Oh yeah, we're out here mangrove snapper fishing today. We're getting on a couple, couple of them. This one seems like he's a little guy. Go ahead and let this guy go. He's not he's nothing too to too impressive, but nice little fish. Uh, we don't have much current today, so I'm using about a five ounce uh, egg sinker uh, to a swivel. And then a you know a four to six foot section of a 50, 40 to 60 pound test I usually use to a J hook or a circle, and then a nice little piece of cup bait. And that's all you need. Go ahead, drop her down, and let's see what happens. I always like to hold the line as I'm dropping it down. 
Um, let's it go down a little bit slower. I feel like it helps helps it not get tangled up. If you drop it down too fast, it'll spin around the main line. And uh, you ain't catching anything that way if your rig's all foamed up. There's bottom. I just rest that sinker right on the bottom and wait for my big bite. I'll get little taps here and there, and then eventually I'll get that nice one. No. Oh. It's frustrating. It's a long way up for another bait. It's okay. It's okay. It was just a nice fish. It's just a nice mangrove. <laughs> if any of you have been out here mangrove snapper fishing, you know that they're... Uh, they're notorious for bringing up empty hooks. Cut this guy in half. Right up through the bottom of his jaw. If you're nice and straight, you won't spin on the way down at all. Next he's over there. Making sure the reel works. <laughs> I think they eat it, so. Lexi might be baitless. We'll see. Yep, I knew it. They ate it! Well, I just lost mine too, Lexi, so don't feel too bad. At least I think I did. Oh! I got a second chance. Can I make the best of it? Oh. No, I can't. Can't. Can't, can't, can't. Can't stop, won't stop. I'm dropping down again. Actually, no. what do you want, a butt section or a head section? Um. I'll take the butt. Yeah, sure, whatever you want to give me. Well, honestly, the head section that stays on better. Yeah. But I'll give you a, a smaller one. All right, killer. Thanks. That's all you. Let's double up on this one, Lexi. How about that? Sounds good. What do you think about that? That would be great. All right. I got the butt, you got the head of the same fish. So if one fish catches two fish, one fish, two fish, mangrove snapper. Nice one. Woo! We got on, Lexi. Nice mango. Now we're allowed uh, five per person of these, and this is just a perfect little sandwich right there. So we'll go ahead and, uh... oh. Come on, buddy. There you go. Let's go get some more. So that day we ended up getting about a dozen little mangrove snappers ranging from about 13 to 16 inches and, um, and we had a nice little dinner back at my house. Um, let's get back to the boat and finish that conversation we were having. And something else I'd like to talk about when you bring the kids involved this time of the year, the lane snapper bite, yep. they're not a tremendously big snapper but they are excellent table fare. They're very good. And you can put a chicken rig on a spinning reel and let them kids just annihilate those lane snapper and they'll have the time of their life doing it. Yep. Yes. 10 inches and then 10 per person, right? Nope, they are 8, in, eight inches. 8 inches, 8, eight inches, inches actually. Mangrove snappers are 10 inshore, 12 offshore. And then the lane snappers are eight and inches. Some of our yeah. some of our average lane snapper are anywhere from ten to twelve inches. Yeah, and like you said, they're they're great eating. Um, they're easy to find. They're on your you know your, your smaller smaller structure that live rock that live bottom. You know, sixty to eighty foot. You can go out with a chicken rig. 
and uh, and kids absolutely love that stuff. And it, it's really fun for everybody because it's it's constant fishing. Um, I want you guys to have a fun day out on the water, and I want you to pull on some fish. Also, in mention of the snapper fishing, always have a pitch rod ready for that cobia. They yep. are very, very curious. Exactly. You start bringing them big mangroves up off the bottom, a lot of times you'll have a nice sized cobia follow him right to the boat. Yep. yep. All you got to do is have a pitch rod with a bucktail with a jig on it. Just literally put it right in front of his face, and then you'll exactly. have a nice. Well, those, cobia. I mean, those fish when they're fired up, they're, they're another fish that'll eat anything. And they're, and they're fun, fun fish. Every once in a while they get pretty acrobatic. Uh, they'll come out of the water. Um, but they're cool looking fish. They pull hard and, and fantastic eating. Fantastic eating. And those those have to be 33 to the fork um, of the tail, which is a little bit different. Uh, so it's always a good idea to you know, check your regulations there. Good uh, point to point out, Jack. Always know your regulations. Yep. Here in Fort Pierce, you got to make a run sometimes to get to that 90 foot bar. So you're fishing the three mile stuff, you're in state waters. Yep. And the regulations change once you cross that three mile line. Now you're in federal waters. You need to make sure if you're fishing federal waters, you're maintaining federal regulations. Exactly. And, and I know that in uh, the Atlantic state waters here, like red snapper is legal to keep in state waters. But all of them right now. you see officers but know that you are not going to catch exactly. an American red and you will not three miles catch an American. Yeah, you will not catch an American red within three miles. So if you if you go on your on your you know FWC website, it'll give you all your state regulations, but it'll also give you all your federal elect regulations. So make sure that you know the difference between the two because you might just look at that piece of paper and it says, oh, red snap. I can keep one per person right now and uh and you know, okay yeah you can in state waters and you ain't gonna be catching one in state waters um so it's always but you know better be safe than sorry check your regs know before you get out there um because you know those regulations are, are set in place for a reason um there's a reason why i can't keep a grouper during the winter months you know there's there's a reason why that that mutton snapper was changed from 16 inches to 18 inches. They're, you know, they they don't do that stuff just because they want to. They do it because they're learning about these fish, and they know that okay, at around 18 inches, those fish are, are transitioning. You know, we're not we don't want to keep keep any, uh, keep any juvenile fish. Uh, you know, I, I don't I can't keep grouper in the winter months because you know I, I'm taking them out of their spawning season. I don't want to do that. If every client could come on your boat and know one thing straight off the bat, what, do you, what would you say that would be? Uh, a lot of times I like to cater to the customer, yep. and then I'll twist it around so that I know that we have a good day. Exactly. I've had clients want to go catch sailfish and drive past Mahi to do so. Sometimes we might not get that sailfish bite. Yep. A lot of that's all on conditions. The uh, biggest thing, people like to troll. You know, usually your trolling bite's only good for the first part of the morning, and then you want to stop and change it up. Maybe go do a little bit of drift fishing somewhere, so exactly. you drop it. Yeah. And then kids always want to do some bottom fishing. That's a great time to do that. It's at the end of the day, last part of the trip. Mm -hmm. Everybody can sit down, have their lunch, relax, do what you want. Well, work your, work your way fishing. back in. You know, it, yep. you, have, you have a plan for the day, you know. I'm gonna go, I wanna try dolphin fishing, right? So I'm gonna run out. I'm gonna go my, the farthest run of the day is gonna be in the morning for me. And then I work my way in. The other day, um, I went out, you know, like, like we said earlier, it's a good time of the year to go, go dolphin fishing. So I, you know, I thought to myself, all right, let's go out there, let's do some dolphin fishing. Um, but I always have something in my back pocket. I always have a plan B. So we went out there, um, I like to do running and gunning, so I had the radar working, I was looking for birds, beautiful flat day, I should have been able to pick up a coconut. And I, I wasn't getting anything, wasn't seeing any birds, wasn't seeing any weed lines. You know, after after about 30, 45 minutes to an hour of searching, uh, we didn't really see anything. Uh, you know, I, I didn't want to waste my time in um, So I was in the area with a bunch of, bunch of nice ledges, you know, between or around 200 feet away. But we went out there and uh, we were in the area, decided to you know drop some jigs on this 90 foot, or this uh, 200 foot stuff. 
and uh, we, you know, we had a nice little day. We caught scamp grouper, we caught um, some of those red grouper, uh, Nahalmaco jack, amberjack, uh, barracuda, really anything. Big genuine red snapper. And and the best part about them is, is uh, you know, I can fish. I can fish three, four people at the same time in 200 feet of water, you know, and still be catching the same fish that I'd be, be catching using live fish. Got more anglers in the water, more rods fishing, catching a wider variety of species. Uh, we're all using nice, small, little reels, light reels, so everybody's comfortable fishing the whole day. And um, it was a really fun backup. And they ended up having, a, having an absolutely fantastic day. Um, a day that, you know, no, neither of us expected. Because, you know, we expected to go out there and catch some dolphins. Here's a quick little word from our sponsor. Okay, everybody, what an awesome talk with Captain Jason Muller out there. I hope you all enjoyed it and hope you all learned something. We're going to cut to just one more quick uh, fishing clip that we got. Uh, the plan was that day to go out mahi fishing. Um, we got out there. The conditions were less than ideal. Um, you know, flat, calm seas. It was Lake Atlantic out there. Not a wave out there, no current. I was at the radar running for birds, for weeds, all that sort of stuff, and we just weren't seeing anything. So, you know, like we said, time to change the game. We had a plan B. I had some vertical jigs, some slow pitch jigs on the boat. Uh, so we decided to go out there, not a lot of current, so perfect day to do that. And, uh, and go watch me get eight. Guys, this is what we're doing out here. We're just dropping these, uh, Little slow pitch jigs, about 200 feet of water on some ledges here, looking for, you know, anything that bites, I guess. Down we go. Good wide variety of fish you can get out here from amberjack, red snapper, scamp grouper, um, you know, maybe a, maybe a small gag if you're lucky enough. Bottom. You can jig it up, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 feet off the bottom. Really depends on where you're marking fish. I'm not marking much above 30 40 feet off the bottom so i'll give it a good couple pumps get it off the bottom and then and then drop it back down Get much better than this. Nice fish. Come on, bud. I 
I might uh I might change my original guest to uh to an amberjack now. This fish is dogging me. Come on now. <laughs> yes, feels like a jack. Well, he was, he was only about 10 feet off the bottom, so I got about, started out with about 200 feet to go. fish. Nice beautiful fish right here. This is a uh, Almaco jack, very similar to the amber jack, uh, but if you put two and two together, Almaco is a much more defined dorsal fin here, a little taller, uh, and then usually a little darker. Uh, but this is a, uh, it's a pretty good eating fish. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, invite this one to the, uh, the box. To reiterate on what we were talking about on the boat, if I were to have the perfect client, I would like them to come in with their expectations. I want them to come, with me, come to me with an idea of what they want to catch, with an idea of how they want this day to go out. But at the same time, you know, there's a lot that goes into a day of fishing. You know, it might not be that right season. It might not be, the moon might not be right. The tide might not be right. The water color, the water temperature. There's so many factors that go in to having a good day of fishing and these fish are alive and they move. So, you know, I'm doing my best. All these captains, I promise you, are doing your best to get on these fish, to get you exactly what you want. But at the same time, they're out on the water every day and they know what's here. They know what's biting and they know how to put you on some fish. My final advice to you would be to trust your captain and let them get you the best day out on the water that you could possibly have. Welcome to Boating Boot Camp, everybody. This week we're going to Fort Pierce City Marina and we're talking marina etiquette. Let's get right into it. <music> here with Anglin Insider Television. Today we're at Fort Pierce City Marina and we're going to be going over proper marina etiquette and how to hail them properly on your radio so you can go in, get some lunch, possibly get some fuel, dock up for the night, or just, just come in and check out the marina. Let's get started. First off, when you're entering the marina, you would want to hail them on your radio. You switch to channel 16, repeat their name three times, followed by your name. Fort Pier City Marina, Fort Pier City Marina, Fort Pier City Marina. This is fishing vessel High Potential. High Potential, this is Fort Pier City Marina. Please acknowledge and switch to 1717. Switching to 17. Fort Pier City Marina, this is fishing vessel High Potential. I am entering your marina and unfamiliar with the area, looking to get some fuel. Yeah, roger that. I'm going to take gas. Roger that, Cap. Uh, uh, what's your current location? My current location is right at the mouth of the Fort Pierce City Marina. Roger that, Cap. Our channel is marked by the Fort Pierce City Marina. The Fort Pierce City Marina is a fishing vessel high potential. Please acknowledge and switch to 1717. Once you enter the channel, you're going to keep the red buoys to your starboard, green to your port. Once you enter that channel, uh, keep the red to your starboard, green to your port. Uh, while operating in the channel, be careful of the cross current. Once you get further down into the channel, 
you'll come up to my permanent day markers. Once you pass markers 17 and 18, hail me back on 17, and I can further direct you to the fuel dock. Sounds good, thank you. Fort Pierce City Marina, Fort Pierce City Marina, fishing vessel high potential, just passing your day markers. Roger that, Cap. If you look to the southeast, you'll see a yacht named the Amanda. You're going to go around Amanda, pass that T head that the Amanda's on. Once you pass that T head that the Amanda's on, you're going to make a starboard turn in. Once you make that starboard turn in, you're going to continue heading west. When you continue heading west, about 150 yards off to your port side, you'll see our field dock building that's painted white with an American flag. I'll be uh, there wearing a light blue t-shirt, ready to catch your lines for you. Roger that. Thank you. In the Fort Pierce City Marina, as well as all marinas in the state of Florida, it is a no-wake zone, slow speed. So you will be giving off ex absolutely no wake behind your vessel. Usually that's between 600 and 900 RPMs. City Marina. We got our fuel. Now we're inside the little gift shop. Uh, you can get bacon here, drinks, whatever you need if you're just stopping by. But I'm with my good friend Kenny here. He's the assistant dock manager at uh, Fort Pierce City Marina. Um, so Kenny, I guess, you know, just give us a little rundown of the kind of services you offer here. What, what, uh, what somebody can do if they're just stopping by or staying here for an extended period of time. Okay, like uh, if they come up for fuel, we have gas, diesel, um, and then like uh, Jack, you said, you, we have bait. We also have 10 uh, ice here, which uh, range from 10, 25, 50-pound bags of ice. Uh, you can uh, get fish food here, anything that you want, pump out uh, at the fuel dock. Um, other than that, if you want to stay the night, just hail us on 1-6, and, or if you're at the fuel dock and you want to stay, we can just radio in and have uh, slips available and everything like that. So, That's good. So kind of kind of all in one all in sort one. of place. You know, if you're fishing in the area, uh, you need some ice, you need some bait or anything, stop on by, I guess. You know, they have everything that you would need here. And, um, and then if you're a bigger boat, you know, looking to stay the night or anything, I guess you would radio ahead, you know, yeah, call the day before. Absolutely, and we do uh, accept drop-in, so if you guys get stuck in weather, we do uh, do uh, weather. And on top of that, every Wednesdays and Saturdays, we got farmer, farmer's market. Yep. And then every uh, first Friday of every month, we'll have uh, Friday Fest, so if you guys want to bring your boat in, just hail us on one six, and we can further uh, get you into a spot, that you guys can enjoy the festivities that are here at the marina. Awesome. Well, that sounds good. I appreciate it, Kenny. Thank you for helping me no out. No problem. I guess we're gonna head up to Krabby's and get some lunch right now. Absolutely. Um, so I guess we'll pull around here. We got an open slip right next to Krabby's. Yep. Kenny got me. Uh, Kenny got me one open there, so he's gonna help us out, and we'll see you at Krabby's. everybody we made it up here to Krabby's Dockside in Fort Pierce Florida I hope you enjoyed the show today we talked about grouper fishing ma uh, mahi fishing snapper fishing uh, we did a little bit in the Fort Pierce City Marina here um, next week we're gonna be going over new boaters how to properly you know look for a new boat what are your options as a new boater so if you're a new boater make sure you tune in next week I really appreciate you guys watching this week's show and we'll see you next time